Brian Wallach, and Maureen Bell will follow him. Mr. Wallach, you may begin. Chairman Casey and Ranking Member Braun, thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name is Brian Wallach. I have been living with ALS for six years. ALS has changed every part of me. My legs no longer work. My arms no longer work. ALS has almost taken away my voice as well, which is why my amazing wife, Sandra Abravaya, is reading this testimony. ALS is a disease that is 160 years old. Let me repeat that. For 160 years, ALS has killed literally everyone diagnosed with it. Everyone. That is simply unacceptable. Today, we hope to reform the FDA's approach to diseases like ALS. Under current FDA standards, it can take 15 years or more for effective drugs to move from preclinical work to approval. In the meantime, many people have rapidly progressive terminal conditions, including ALS, die and have no viable treatments or options or hope available to them. One of the lessons from the Neuron Adcom is that there is in fact no such thing as a so-called gold standard across the FDA for how to approve new treatments for rare or fatal diseases. Instead, today's reality is that whether a treatment will be approved or not depends on what FDA center it is in and on the specific individuals in the FDA review team assigned to a treatment. A second lesson is that the existence of the 2019 FDA guidance is simply not enough to ensure uniform approval standards of new treatments for ALS. We very, very unfortunately learned this lesson the hard way just a few weeks ago during the ADCOM for Neuron, when the question presented to the ADCOM did not incorporate the FDA's own 2019 guidance about regulatory flexibility. The primary question put before the ADCOM was, do the data presented demonstrate substantial evidence of effectiveness for treatment of mild to moderate ALS? This question did not at all make reference to the 2019 FDA guidance that stated, quote, when making regulatory decisions about drugs to treat ALS, FDA will consider, one, patient tolerance for risk, two, the serious and life-threatening nature of the condition, and three, also within the context of statutory requirements for safety and efficacy. And this, this is exactly why legislation such as the Promising Pathways Act is absolutely critical for people living with ALS. There is no FDA approved biomarker for 95% of us living with ALS. What is the result of that? The result is that treatments for 95% of people living with ALS, including Brian, do not qualify for accelerated approval. The Promising Pathways Act addresses this issue by creating provisional approval. The Promising Pathways Act is also building the infrastructure to require drug sponsors to move faster in conducting their phase three trial and giving the FDA the authority to remove provisional approval if additional data makes clear that that is merited. We support efforts to bring safe, promising therapies to more people living with terminal diagnosis pending full FDA approval. We also support efforts to increase spending on research into the causes of ALS and potential treatments. But we do not support saying to this generation, thank you for your contribution to research. Now go home and prepare to die. While academics and bioethicists may have the luxury of debating theoretically what might look like some perfect system, us, People living with ALS today, whose lives are literally on the line, we, we do not have that luxury. And we are looking to you to provide them with the hope that they can live a little bit longer and maybe even be here to see a cure for ALS. The key here is that PPA approval is merely provisional. It affords early access to promising drugs to people with extremely serious conditions who are willing to take risks. It allows additional evidence about a drug's efficacy to be collected during the short two-year provisional approval windows. 
Provisional approval can occur only if a drug has been shown to be safe, and required patient registries enable much broader data collection about a drug's efficacy and safety than can even occur in traditional clinical trials. This data, this data will help the FDA make even better decisions when it comes to the approval and labeling of new treatments. Moreover, drug sponsors presumably want to obtain full approval of any provisionally approved drug other than allowing the real use of real world evidence to supplement an application the ppa does not alter the current fda standards for full drug approval in any way the als story is slowly changing with and with measures such as the ppa we can make faster changes needed to finally get treatments to the community that will allow people such as myself to live longer and to potentially be around to see als transform from fatal to chronic I want to take a moment to recognize the caregivers and the people living with ALS in this hearing room today. We represent the 30,000 Americans living with ALS right now. I hope you or your staff will take the time to hear their stories and why they believe in the need for a Promising Pathways Act. I also want to recognize Dr. Peggy Plews Ogan, who is before you as a witness and who has been living and breathing ALS and the PPA for the last year and a half. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this discussion, and thank you for understanding how important the Promising Pathways Act is.